A couple weeks ago, I decided to try and play through all of Terraria using only the Wand of Sparking to kill bosses and enemies. Now, I can't use any extra summons, I can't use traps to help out, this is the only thing I can use to kill bosses. Here's how it went. Now before we get too far into this, I do want to say I'm in normal mode, and there's obviously a reason for this. In order to have the highest chance of reaching Moonlord in this run, I figured normal mode is the way to go because the enemies, not only do they have less defense, but they also have less health. So bosses and such will be hopefully doable. Now in terms of just playing the game early on, the Wand of Sparking isn't actually that bad. It actually can deal like decent amounts of damage to enemies and it's even not that bad against some bosses like you'll see the King Slime which we'll get to in a bit and the Eye Cthulhu. It's not too bad if the wand is sparking but later on we run into some troubles. As we make our way to the jungle we find a desert pyramid and inside the chest we get a sandstone bottle which is amazing for us obviously because that'll help a lot. Mobility is really great no matter what class you're doing um, and what type of challenge you're doing. Mobility is always key. So this is really great for us. After farming a bit for some jungle armor, we were blessed with a pretty cool drop. Uh, twice. Yo! <laughs> nice, dude! <laughs> okay, we, we will take that. We will definitely take that. One in 300. <laughs> yeah, no, this is the buff we needed, guys. This is... This is how you do this. If you're if you're not wearing the pumpkin vanity gear, you just you're doing it wrong. You can't complete this challenge without the pumpkin mask and all of that good stuff. <laughs> all right, we're. What? Are you kidding? Did we really just get another one? Of course it has to be the exact same thing, but I shouldn't complain. We've gotten two of these. <laughs> How long has it been? It's been like 10 minutes, 20 minutes since the last one. So yeah, that happened. <laughs> so after crafting the last couple pieces of the jungle armor set, we are almost ready to take on our first boss, the King Slime. All that's left is getting a couple more movement accessories and then we're good to go. Or at least so I thought. So fast forward about an hour-ish and we're still looking for rubies in order to get the, in order to craft the King Slime Summon. And on top of all of this, we have some goblins awaiting our return at the top. So yeah, it was not going as great. Um, but on the bright side of things, while looking for the rubies, we managed to get all of our life maxed out. We are now at 400. And yes, there are seriously probably a total of about four rubies on this whole entire world. So yes, it took it took quite a while. Okay, let's talk Goblin Army real quick. So I kid you not, this took about half an hour to complete. And it was really painful. This is when the pain and the realization of how stupid this challenge is was kind of starting to set in. So not only does it take forever to kill these enemies, but because we're kind of going mage and we haven't gotten the Tinkerer yet, obviously, because it's our first goblin army, um, we, we don't really have much defense to work with here. So we have to just sit here, slowly grinding away at the, these goblins. It is unreal. It is unreal how long this took. And of course, the goblins do like a lot of damage. Like they're doing a lot, a lot of damage to us too. So it's, it's not even like I can just stand in one spot and just keep on spamming the one of sparking at them. I actually have to kind of focus and, you know, dodge all of the strikes. It's, it's bad. It's bad. Anyways, that was the Goblin Army. This is, again, this is where the pain started to set in. After eventually coming to my senses, I realized, with the help of chat, that we can just use Silt with the Extractionator to get our rubies. And, of course, it uh, <laughs> definitely would be a lot quicker because yeah we still haven't found rubies at all in this world it's crazy there are literally like no rubies that have generated on this world and it was really bad so we used some silt we hit up the extractionator and we were good to go so now we are finally ready for our first boss and in fact our gear is pretty much good enough to take us all the way to hard mode there's a few things we want to switch and look out for but for the most part we are ready just to start cruising through boss fights yeah, well, yeah, you know what, Propel? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> it's fine. It's whatever. We're, we're fighting King Slime. Let's do it. Uh, Because yeah, it's only got two... Th oh, God. Okay, Chris, thank you for follow. Oh, boy. King Slime time. Oh, <laughs> uh, actually, this is doing, like, a lot of damage. 
This is not bad. This is definitely doable. We just gotta spam click our way to victory. <laughs> That's all we gotta do. It doesn't even matter if we're hitting it half the time. Because we're not really on a timer. I didn't buff, did I? Let's buff. Let's buff. I- Oh, wait! Okay, the NPCs are gonna kinda hit it too, so... Let's see what the traveling merch can do. It's gonna snipe it. I didn't intentionally do this, so... <laughs> um... Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> He's, he's, he's gonna die. It's fine. It's not affecting it that much. This is still a true one of sparking run, okay? I don't care what anyone says. We're doing... Uh, I'm seeing crits for like 8, so that's good. It's down to like a quarter health. This is going way faster. I thought this would take way longer than it is. <laughs> okay, so yeah, King Slime is pretty simple, as you all know. There's nothing too crazy going on here. I went ahead and sped it up a little bit because, well, it ended up taking about 5-6 minutes to beat King Slime, which... If you think about it, it's kind of sad, but at the same time, I thought it would take a lot longer for uh, King Slime. But, of course, the bosses are only going to get more and more health from here, so be prepared for some more sped up boss fights. But yeah, uh, this wasn't this wasn't too bad. We didn't really have any, ma we didn't have magic power or anything either. It was very simple. For those wondering, we just have uh, Hermes boots, Sandstorm in a bottle, and then just some other random accessories. I don't even think we really had reforges at this point. In fact, I, we didn't because we don't even have the goblin yet. So yeah, very, very simple boss fight. And there's King Slime. Like, oh no, 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 stay back. No, come down here. No, don't even think about sniping my prey. Go away. Come on. Last hit. There we go. And that's King Slime, everyone. <laughs> Wanda sparking only. King Slime. GG. There we go. Okay, next up, I have Cthulhu. That one might be a mess. Maybe. Do you guys, should we try I have Cthulhu like right now? Yes, do it. Okay, we have three summoning items. We got a swiftness potion. I'm feeling like we can do this. And yeah, just like that, we are right into the I have Cthulhu fight after waiting for nights. And once again, nothing too crazy going on, especially since this is normal mode. I have Cthulhu is pretty easy in normal mode, as most of you probably know. So yeah, it there's again not a whole lot going on here, but. <laughs> it just takes a very, very long time. In fact, I'm pretty sure I could have just, like, uh, grappled the platform and then started attacking it. I don't even know. I think that I could, if Cthulhu would be doing about 5 damage to us, so that would actually probably work. But as you can see, we're getting crits for about 6 and 8 damage, so, like, it takes a while. This one took about 5, 6 minutes again. Not too much longer than King Slime, just because I think we were hitting it more. Um, even because obviously it has a health increase, but the King Slime, I, my aim was really bad during it, so I think that's why this one is about the same amount of time, even though it had way more health. But again, that's King Slime, and of course, we pretty much have all the gear we need. There is one other accessory that we are definitely going to look into, but we'll, we'll talk more about that later. It's going to be really important for this run, so you will see what I'm talking about in just a moment. But yeah, there's I Cthulhu. Okay, 100 health. Last few hits until we get the I've Cthulhu killed. Oh, rip for NPCs. It's fine. There we go. There we go. Wanda sparking only. Easy. Easy. Alright, so we do actually get a Blood Moon here, and this is really important because there is an item that's going to be very, very useful in this run. It's called the Shark Tooth Necklace. Now, this item, if you don't know, actually has five, it gives you five armor penetration, which basically means that you do an extra two or three damage to every enemy you go up against. So, it obviously, it depends on rounding, which is why it's not a specific number. But obviously, this is really good in a run where we're only doing about 2 or 3 damage to most things anyways. So, this is effectively like doubling our, our uh, damage output on some enemies. Which, again, very, very helpful. Going to speed up the boss fights a lot. And is crucial in order to do this run. Okay, let's take out this one right here. It's gonna be this one. I have faith. Come on. Oh, yo! <laughs> Let's go! We got it! We did it! Oh my god! <laughs> See, I'm telling you, the RNG, the RNG is on my side today. <laughs> Let's go! And we even got guarding too, that's pretty good. So now with the shark tooth necklace in our toolkit, we're gonna be doing easily enough damage to take on the Brain of Cthulhu, which is what we are doing now. We now actually have come prepared with some extra buffs like magic power, uh, so that should help a ton against the Brain. As you can see, there's a little bit more going on here, um, and the reason why I picked the Brain of Cthulhu, there's actually a reason for this. So 
the corruption, um, I was looking at the defense values of both bosses and the, everything. The defense is roughly the same, but the main selling point on the brain of Cthulhu for me was the fact that it's not immune to the on-fire debuff while the eater is. So this means all that extra tick damage that we're going to be getting is going to help a, help out a lot. Um, so basically, before going to this, I needed to make sure that everything would be like... What, what would be the easiest route to take? And I figured the Crimson would be easier than the Corruption because of this reason. The Wand of Sparking is a crutch, and I will happily abuse it. <laughs> this looks so pathetic, but there we go. There we go. That's the Brain of Cthulhu. Done. Easy. Okay, with the Brain of Cthulhu out of the way, as I said before, we're not really getting much more gear. Uh, that's better than what we have. At this point, it's just optimizing our reforges, and that's about it. So we're heading straight into Queen Bee. Now, this one, this boss fight specifically, took a very long time. Because as you can see right now, it's very difficult to hit the Queen Bee consistently because of the way it moves. Our really only, like, time to get damage in is when <laughs> she starts to ram us. And until that point, we're just kind of flailing about with our Wanda Spark and open to get a stray hit in. And yeah, it, it, it took a very, very long time, because not only do you have the extra defense, extra health, but you also, you know, just can't even hit the boss half the time because of the way the Wanda Sparking works and its range and its slow velocity. It's, it was a mess. But that being said, it was still not challenging. Now, this boss isn't on a timer, um, which we're actually going to talk about a lot more. So this was still doable for sure. Um, but yeah, next step, in fact, we'll, we'll talk about it now. Next up is Skeletron. And that's a timed boss fight, which is probably the first boss fight I wasn't sure if we were actually going to be able to get past. So we're going to explore that in a second. But yeah, there's Queen Bee. Again, just another really, really long fight. Come on, just, just it's one hit. It's, it's one hit. Even the Wand of Sparking can one hit this. Just kidding. One more. Just one more. One more. <laughs> the last hit. Come on. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> the snipe. We did it. We have done it. Wand of Sparking, Queen Bee has been completed. Once again, after quickly whipping up a new arena for Skeletron, we are just straight into another boss. So again, as I was saying before, this was a boss fight where I wasn't sure if we'd actually get past when I was initially planning the run. And this is because it's a timed fight. So there's literally a chance we don't have enough damage output to continue the run. All other bosses that aren't timed, we could technically do. If I was really devoted and dedicated enough, it would take hours and hours and hours. But technically, they would be possible, and except for when it comes to these timed boss fights like this one. But it ended up not being too bad. We were doing quite a lot of damage. I quickly noticed that like we were, were definitely going to be able to finish this in time. So what we ended up doing was actually just like messing around and targeting the hands, even though we had no reason to do that. Uh, we just we just did it just because. And of course, since this is normal mode, uh, Skeletron is doing like literally one damage to us, like pretty much nothing at all. So. It's, uh, there's not a whole lot we got, we have to worry about. Um, and yeah, again, pretty, pretty easy stuff. Really glad we could get past this, which means we have a solid chance at getting through hard mode. One more roadblock in the way, the wall of flesh. There we go, the hand has been taken out. We've done it, boys. <laughs> We've done it. Skeletron is about to go down. Fallen Star, don't even think about it. There we go. Easy. Easy. So, the wall of flesh is another boss that could potentially just halt the run and completely make it impossible and this is because if we don't do enough damage to the wall of flesh before it reaches the end of the world then we can't kill it right so i made sure to maximize the space in our arena and if need be we could go on to a large world because i wasn't thinking and we made a medium-sized world to start out but yeah we're in this anyways <laughs> trying our best to do this so a quick little thing is ba basically the idea behind this fight is we need to get rid of the hungry so that they just they're not a problem when we're trying to dodge, and so then we can actually like get close to the eyes, and they won't block our attacks, right? Because uh, we want to be hitting the eyes as much as possible, because they don't have defense in normal. They're, it's just zero, which means we'll be doing as much damage as possible to them. Now, the, the interesting thing here is I didn't really prepare enough buffs for the fight. So before going into it, I only had a, one set of buffs, so everything ran out because of how long the boss fight took. So we ended up actually dying to the wall of flesh, uh, which is kind of sad again. But to be fair, I'm using the Wanda Sparking and trying my best to like maximize damage so we don't run out of room. Um, but no, yeah, it's still it's still pretty sad. Um, but yeah, we we died to Wall of Flesh, but that we're not out of the fight. We're gonna come back, bring some more buffs, and try this again. Okay, so we're back. We got the Wall of Flesh here. 
round number two, we have more buffs. I also went and got the Cobalt Shield. And I actually just remembered, I totally forgot to mention what Reforges we were going for. So because the base damage on the Wanda Sparking is so low, we actually are optimizing our crit chance as much as possible. So everything is Reforged to Lucky rather than Menacing. Because 20% extra damage on the Wanda Sparking is like one point. But if we could, like one point of damage, you know. Um, but if we could crit much more often then we're getting much more out of that. So that's why we're focusing on crit chance first and then damage after that. So again, this is going a lot more smoothly. We have the Cobalt Shield, so even if we get hit, we don't get like, you know, spam attacks, you know? Everything's everything's going a lot better. Uh, my, I did a much better job at killing the Hungry. And yeah, I this was actually doable without even on going on a large world. So we, I think we just kind of barely got past the halfway point. I think maybe like three-fifths of the runway was used up. So that was much better than I expected. I ended up even attacking the middle half of the time just because it was a lot easier to uh, hit without taking damage. Um, but yeah, it was it was a pretty interesting fight. Again, this took a very, very long time. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's how it is. It's shooting quite a lot of lasers, dude. <laughs> okay, let me just chill. Get some mana back, and then we go. Now we end it. Now we end it. It's over. It's over, Wall Flesh. It's over. <laughs> Let's go, dude. GG. We are in hard mode with just the Wanda Sparking. Wanda Sparking only. Now, unfortunately, for the Wanda Sparking run, this is where our dreams are going to be crushed because the mech bosses have way too much health and way too much defense for us to be able to take them down while it's still nighttime. Because as you all know, if the mech boss does not die before night ends, then they will just despawn. So, what does this mean? Well, we can't actually progress. I've done everything we could possibly do. We have Sorcerer's Emblem, we got wings, obviously it helps us dodge and like get close to the boss. We use the magic ball. We have all lucky um, and titanium gear with the right the, with the correct helmet on. I was debating using Ore Calcum Armor, which might make some of these mech bosses possible. But it's it, even even then, Destroyer, I'm pretty sure, is still impossible because you have to do about, I think I we were talking about it before uh, in chat, I think it was like 150 damage per second, um, which is just literally impossible because right now I think our base damage is like 14 or 15. Um, and even with, like, in order for the crits to count, we have to get our base damage doing more than one or two damage to the boss before it starts to get to like four or six, etc., right? Um, so yeah, this is where the run ends. Um, <laughs> yeah, it sucks. It's really unfortunate. Uh, there's, there's, as far as I know, there is no way to get past all three mech bosses without um, using some other type of thing, without using traps, summons, uh, something like that, or Calcum Armor. Or Calcum Armor might get you, uh, you might be able to get away with the twins, potentially Skeletron. I still think Destroyer is impossible with just the Wanda Sparking in the current state of the game. So yeah, that's that's gonna be it for the video, but I'm still surprised we got into hard mode. Um, it was kind of crazy. I'm not sure how <laughs> how we uh, managed to get so far and why. I mean, I wouldn't have been able to do this without Twitch chat entertaining me and uh, being with me. So again, thank you for everyone who's tuning in during that. Um, but this isn't the end for the Terraria challenges. I wanna do more stuff like this. So if you guys wanna see more, uh, I'm gonna have a poll right now, and we're gonna vote on what we want to do. So there have been a couple suggestions from uh, stream, and basically one of which was tools only run. Um, tools only. So basically we can only use like axes, pickaxes, hammers, that sort of thing against bosses. Think of like true melee, but with less damage, and you don't really get any perks out of it. Uh, so that would be interesting. Um, and then the other is a sand gun only run, because I don't know if you guys have ever used a sand gun. I know lots of people haven't. But it literally will drop blocks of sand wherever you shoot. So what this means is I'd probably make a rule like we can't remove sand ever from the world. And we just see what it looks like by the time we finish. I feel like that'd be really meme and fun. Uh, but again, it's up to you guys. Those are the two options I'm going to list. Uh, tools only or sand gun only. I'm going to uh, put a poll in the top right right now. And yeah, vote for which one you want. Uh, if you want to catch the action live, then be sure to check out the Twitch channel. Of course, subscribe if you're new. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.